One Piece story arcs, how much of the story is left? The story that goes forever. Welcome everyone for today's video about One Piece. Before anything else, please do like, comment and subscribe on this channel. Click on the bell sign to get notification on my latest uploads videos. Sit back and enjoy. One Piece is the best selling shonen manga that has held the top position for many years, with many of its volumes reaching beyond the million sale mark. Truly, One Piece has become a king that has reigned supreme at the top for so long that it's become quite questionable if any other series will be able to usurp One Piece's position at the top. One thing that has made One Piece quite successful, but also quite infamous for its longevity. One Piece is an incredibly long with the manga going on for 20 years plus and with seemingly no end in sight. Recently, Aiyakairo Oda has released a statement in which One Piece is 80% finished. This caused a wide range of reactions, with the bulk of the reactions from the community being of confusion and surprise, as people are wondering how One Piece could be 80% finished with so much of the story still left to be told and many narrative threads still not tied. This begs the question on how many story arcs are left for One Piece? How much of the story does the manga have left to conclude before the manga can finally stop being serialized and the last chapter could be drawn and printed? One Piece throughout its serialization has introduced a world filled with incredible characters, diverse islands, and many mysteries that readers have speculating for as long as the manga has been running. While Oda continues to tease the audience with the importance of these mysteries, they have yet to be revealed and answered. Oda has also foreshadowed future story arcs and locations that the Straw Hats would go sometime in the future and foreshadow showdown with certain characters as time goes on. To break down everything and structure this breakdown, I structure how I think the story will move forward around islands, much like how One Piece structures story arcs. Wano Country Arc Currently, the manga is in the Wano Country Arc, but I wanted to include this arc as this arc has been foreshadowed and hyped for many years since it was first hinted at. An island inspired by feudal Japan with samurai and ninjas fighting the Straw Hats and having Zoro, the crew sword member, have one of his greatest fights against a powerful samurai. The arc continued to pick YP Steam when it was announced that Kaido, one of the four emperors and one of the strongest pirates in the story, being stationed in Wano and ruling over it with an iron fist, people were incredibly excited as Wano Country arc was shaping up to be one of the most exciting arcs since the Marine Ford arc. With a plethora of already established characters, events having to go down and mysteries to be revealed, Wano Country is expected to be an incredibly long and dense arc. We have a great many expectations for Wano Country. Firstly, we have the plotline with Kaido and his war. Luffy and his alliance have provoked Kaido to the point of extreme anger. Kaido wants blood as Luffy and Law have stopped his production of artificial devil fruits, destroying his dream of creating a crew filled with entirely devil fruit crew members. Straw Hats and their alliance have beef with Kaido as they have caused great pain for the Mink tribe for almost entirely wiping out their civilization and the Kojiki clan for killing Odin Kojiki and taking over Wano country. Kaido also has a road pwn glyph, one of the four pwn glyphs needed to find Raptal. Luffy, who has ambitions to be the Pirate King, absolutely needs that road pwn glyph in order to become the Pirate King. All this culminates into a compelling reason for both Luffy and Kaido to face off against each other. The arc will also feature a massive amount of characters, more so than Marineford arc. We have to be introduced to the Beast Pirates as a massive crew and see how they operate as a crew. We also have characters like Hawkins, Scotchman, Apu, and X Drake that have pledged loyalty under Kaido and have been introduced before, but haven't done much story-wise. We also have Eustace Kid, who has been captured by Kaido and locked away, has been a character that has been set up as a rival to Luffy. We also have potential simulary characters and residents of Wano Country, such as the Shogun of Wano, who has allied with Kaido to rule over Wano. With a slew of new characters and already established characters to be developed further, there is an excitement to be seen for this arc. We could also possibly see Izo, the fourth division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. Based on his traditional Japanese attire, it's very much possible that he could appear during the Wano Country arc Izo's appearance and the significance in the story could extend to a story arc with Marco on Whitebeard's home village. This arc also reveal crucial story details in regards to the mystery of the world, the Void Century. It's been revealed in the Zo arc that the Kojiki family has been a family that has lived for thousands of years and created the Pwn Glyphs. Since the Pwn Glyphs are the key to fully understanding the Void Century and the ancient kingdom that lives on through the Unbreakable Stone, we could finally get a glimpse of the Void Century and the Kojiki clan's involvement with the ancient kingdom. Elbaf arc. 
This arc has been foreshadowed far before Wano Country was first hinted at and was hinted at even before the Alabasta Arc Elbaf, the land of the giants, have been the location that the Straw Hats have been wanting to visit for a long time. Ever since meeting the giants of Dori and Brogi, Luffy and Usopp have been waiting to see Elbaf and finally reach the land of the giants. For how or why the Straw Hats will go to this island besides the fact that they want to is unknown. However, I have a theory in regards to why the Straw Hats will go to Elbaf that will be a really compelling reason to set sail for Elbaf after Wano. My theory is that the last road Pone Glyph is located on Elbaf. The reason I say this is due to two things, an outside of story reason and in story reason. Firstly, Oda has been writing and illustrating the manga for 20 years and running. Manga artists in Japan work incredibly long and grueling hours to be able to release a chapter weekly. Due to this work schedule, it's not uncommon for artists to get sick and be bedridden. Oda himself have gotten sick due to his work and had to take regular breaks to recover. Considering that Oda still has a ways to go to end One Piece, Oda needs to cut the story down as much as he can to make it much more concise. Oda has been for a few arcs such as Punk Hazard and Dress Rosa arcs. The Punk Hazard arc had two distinct themes, fire and ice. Oda wanted to do an ice island arc and a fire island arc, but had to combine them both in order to save time. For the Dress Rosa arc, Oda wanted to do a Spanish arc and an arc around dwarves, but had to smash the two together to cut the time it will take to write and draw those arcs. For the Road Pone Glyph to be on Elbaf makes sense as saves time for the Straw Hats to scour the new world for the Pone Glyph and gives them a compelling story reason to visit the island and makes the story more concise. For the second reason and the in-story reason, the giants of Elbaf have a connection to the Will of D. Back in Robin's flashback, Robin met a giant who had the middle initial D in his name. Since the Void Century and the Will of D are interconnected and confirming that giants can also have the D initial, this would make sense for the giants to have a connection to this history. This would also allow a fantastic moment for character development for Usopp. Ever since the time skip, Usopp has been lacking in character development, especially towards the his dream of becoming a warrior of the sea. In this arc, Usopp could finally be brave, harness his observation hacky and get his admiration from giants who he has loved and admired since the Little Garden arc. Shanks arc. Considering that we are currently in the Yonko saga, I do believe that we will get an arc revolving around Shanks. Whether it will be Elbaf or another island in which he rules over is unknown, but I firmly believe that an arc with Shanks will happen and it will happen relatively soon. The reason I believe this is due to the importance Shanks has and his connection to the Void Century. I also believe that a Shanks arc will happen due to the significance of Luffy and Shanks meeting again after 12 years of not seeing each other and Shanks witnessing Luffy's progression as a pirate. This arc has been hinted at ever since the first chapter of One Piece, in which Luffy promises to return Shanks' straw hat when he becomes a great pirate. We don't get another indication of this arc until after the time skip, during the Dress Rosa arc, when Kid, Apu and Hawkins reveal that their target will be Red Hair Shanks. This gave the reader an indication that conflict between Kid and Shanks will occur and may have Luffy jumping into the fray to prevent this conflict from happening as Luffy wants to be the one to defeat Shanks. While Eustace Kid is now currently in Wano country, rotting in a prison cell, this sets up an interesting place for the Shanks arc to really happen. A likely scenario of the events I'm about to describe could transpire that would likely kick off a potential Shanks arc. At the end of the Wano Country arc, Luffy, Kid and Law and the Alien Ace would have likely fought against Kaido and saved Wano Country from the tyranny of Kaido. Kid will set sail to incur Shanks' wrath and get his attention so he could kill him, however, Luffy will find out about this plan and attempt to stop Kid. Luffy will probably tail Kid until he reaches his destination. Kid may has figured out that Shanks is hard to locate in the new world so he would need to do something to catch his attention and to do so, he has to attack someone that he knows is close to Shanks or attack an island that is under the protection of the Red Hair Pirates. A likely territory could be the territory where Bartolomeo was in his cover story. Kid could attack this territory and incur Shanks' wrath. For a likely person that Kid could attack, it most likely will be Buggy. This makes sense as after the Marine Ford arc, the world has discovered that Shanks and Buggy were both members of the Roger Pirates back in the day and that they both share a brotherly bond with one another. Kid would see this as an opportunity to anger Shanks and attack Buggy. A battle ensues and Luffy will jump in to fight Kid as Luffy has a connection with Buggy after escaping Impel Down and fighting during the Marine Ford battle together. Buggy, being incredibly scared, will use Luffy to fight his battle while putting on a false bravado. After the battle, one of two things happen, Buggy will take them to Shanks or Shanks will arrive at Buggy's island. Whatever the case, 
Luffy and Shanks will finally meet up again while Kid attempts to attack Shanks, but obviously Shanks being incredibly powerful, he can easily repel Kid's attacks and push him back. Shanks has always been a character we would meet again someday. Shanks gave Luffy the hat so that Luffy could give it back to Shanks after he has become a great pirate. When Luffy finally sees Shanks again, it's going to be a reunion that readers will have waited for ever since the first chapter and be incredibly sad of seeing for them to reunite and share the adventures that these two characters have gone through since they have last seen each other. Shanks can finally meet the crew that Luffy would promise to form and surpass Shanks' own crew. Luffy will also meet Shanks' crew again and maybe Oda will give us new flashbacks that has Luffy meeting and forming bonds with other meme bears of Shanks' crew. It would also be great if we get a flashback of Luffy meeting Shanks for the first time and how they met would be incredible. As they discuss with each other, Shanks could discuss about his connection with Roger, being a member of the Roger Pirates and what he had discovered on Raftal. They could also discuss Bartolomeo and his attack on his territory and even have him locked up on Shanks' ship, including him into the Ark as well. Shanks could also warn Luffy of Blackbeard and his true nature, telling Luffy that needs to be careful. Finally, we can figure out why Kid has a conflict with Shanks. The fourth and last road pwn glyph could be under the protection of Shanks. It would make sense storytelling wise and could create a very compelling reason for Shanks and Luffy in terms of a future fight between the two and as characters. During the Marineford arc, Whitebeard told Blackbeard that he isn't the person that Roger wants to find his treasure. Since Roger told Whitebeard everything about the will of D and the Void Century, Whitebeard knows just as much as the Roger pirates do. This gives the reader the idea that Roger was looking for a specific person to find One Piece and reclaim the title of Pirate King. Since Shanks was a member of the Roger Pirates, Shanks knows exactly who Roger is looking for. Since the straw hat held a lot of sentimental value for Shanks since the hat was originally Roger's, Shanks wouldn't give his hat to just anyone. When Shanks gave it to Luffy, he had complete faith that Luffy would be the next Pirate King. Shanks is protecting the last road pwn glyph because he is waiting for someone worthy of Pirate King to reach Raftal. Many powerful pirates around the world are seeking the stones to become Pirate King and Shanks being a former member of the Roger Pirates has an obligation to help Rogers will continue. Since Shanks believes Luffy will be the Pirate King, he must waiting for Luffy to face him and get the stone so he could reach Raftal. Shanks could also be protecting it so Blackbeard doesn't get a chance to get the stone. It's well known that Shanks has always been incredibly wary of Blackbeard and his advances. Shanks must know who Blackbeard truly is and his goals to be Pirate King. To ensure that doesn't happen, Shanks must protect the stone from falling into the wrong hands. I think having Luffy fight Shanks and defeat him for the stone makes perfect sense for many reasons. Firstly, to become the Pirate King, Luffy must be the strongest pirate in the world. Luffy must rise above the Yonko and claim his title. Since Shanks a member of the Yonko, Luffy defeating a Yonko one-on-one -on -one demonstrates how powerful Luffy has become. Secondly, Luffy has been training and getting strong so he could one day fight and surpass Shanks as a pirate and this is the perfect opportunity to do. A theme that would perfectly fit this arc is the passing of the torch and the next generation. Roger started the golden age of piracy, and created a massive balloon of pirates to set sail to find Roger's treasure. Shanks, who was a part of Roger's crew, grew up to be an incredibly powerful pirate. Shanks then passed his torch down to Luffy, who has become part of the worst generation as well as Kid. Luffy inspired Bartolomeo, who has now pledged himself under the Straw Hat Pirate's flag. The passing of the torch is important as a powerful will cannot be subdued and can't be let go. Someone's will cannot be broken, but can only be inherited. Whitebeard's Home Island Arc While some may view this as a stretch in regards to the journey the Straw Hats are taking in the New World, I believe that this arc is essential to visit, especially for Luffy's journey as a character. This can be backed up with the evidence that Oda has been placing as recent as Dress Rosa and as far back as Marineford Arc. I believe this arc to be incredibly important as this island has Marco, former first division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, who is staying on the island as a guardian. He wants to protect the island as this island was the one in which his captain, Whitebeard, was born and raised in. Marco felt responsible and obligated to protect the homeland of his former captain due to the love he has given him since he joined his crew. This is also where Ace and Whitebeard were buried, making this island incredibly sentimental for the Whitebeard pirates. When Blackbeard invaded, the Whitebeard pirates took action to protect their former captain's homeland and fought the Blackbeard pirates, fighting a war nicknamed the Payback War and eventually losing to the Blackbeard pirates. 
Marco is the sole guardian of the island as he wants the people living in this peaceful land to continue living in peace and protect it from forces that mean to cause harm to the citizens of the island. This arc has been hinted at for a number of reasons. Firstly, Edward Weevil and Miss Bacon are hunting for this island as they believe that Whitebeard is hiding his fortune on the island. Edward Weevil believes himself to the true son of Whitebeard and is hunting Marco to fight him and claim his rightful inheritance. Miss Bacon, Weevil's mother, has a thirst for wealth and believes that Whitebeard, someone she has known for many years, has a fortune hidden away due to his incredibly successful career as a pirate. They will stop at nothing to find this island and on their journey, they have a left a wake of destruction against anyone who considers him to be a fraud who is trying to use Whitebeard's name for monetary gain, as evidenced when Weevil defeated 16 pirate crews that were allied with Whitebeard during the Battle of Marine Fort. After brutally defeating the A.O pirates who were subordinates of the Whitebeard pirates, they believe Monkey D. Luffy knows where Marco is located and are in active pursuit for him. One of the paths that the story could take after Wano Country arc has ended could lead Luffy to the island where Marco is located. While the Japanese raw translation leaves the fate on whether Marco will join the battle in Wano quite ambiguous, many English translation has Marco staying behind on the island to protect it against the threat of Edward Weevil coming to the island and causing havoc on the island, hinting at a battle between Weevil and Marco. While Marco leaves a message for Luffy to Nekamashi, I believe that once Luffy obtains the message, Luffy will likely want to see Marco for clarify action on the message and to pay his respects to Marco for saving him during the Marine Ford War. If the story does move toward this direction, a number of things could happen. Firstly, Luffy can thank Marco in person for saving his life and taking care of Ace while he was alive. Secondly, Marco can take Luffy to Ace's grave so Luffy can properly pay respects to Ace and thank him as well. Thirdly, Marco can tell Luffy what exactly happened during the payback war and give full detail on who exactly Blackbeard is as a character and what his agenda is. Marco can also give crucial detail about Whiteboard, who he was a person and his pirate life before he formed the Whitebeard Pirates and his probable connection to the Rocks Pirates. If Izo is a part of Wano Country arc and he goes with the Straw Hats to see Marco, we could get a reunion of two Whitebeard commanders and get a history of the Whitebeard Pirates and their allied captains, since we haven't seen those characters since the Marine Ford arc considering that we are currently in the Yonko saga and Whitebeard was a Yonko before he died, it makes sense. The arc can culminate to the arrival of Edward Weevil and Marco and Luffy fighting Weevil until he's defeated. From this, we can truly discover if he's really the son of the late Whitebeard or just a pawn in a scheme lead by Miss Bakken to achieve a fortune that never actually existed. Marco will send Luffy with a dire message of Blackbeard and Luffy will continue his journey, having learned the absolute true nature of Blackbeard and add more emotional context for a future fight with Blackbeard. A significant theme that I can see for this arc the true nature of family, with Whitebeard being an orphan and having no blood relatives to care for him in his children, but grows up up to be a pirate that grows his own pirate crew that he viewed as his adopted family. However, one of his sons Blackbeard betrays his father and rebels against him, eventually killing him and taking everything he owns. Whitebeard's adopted family, his crew, attempts to take revenge for their late father, but are unable to deliver vengeance on their twisted brother. Marco then spends his life on his father's island, hoping that this deed will repay the insurmountable debt that he owes to his deceased father. Despite proclaiming being Whitebeard's biological son and claiming that they are his true family, Edward Weevil and Miss Bakken only go to visit Whitebeard's homeland for the money that he supposedly accumulated throughout his career, but to pay respects to their supposed family member. Being a peaceful village, usually when one is with family, they are at peace with oneself and feel satisfaction, however, twisted family members who do not love, but hate only spreads negativity and destruction of one's peace. This island being the final resting place showcases the peace and serenity one feels when with being at home and with family. Interestingly enough, the art and the design for this peaceful village appears to be inspired by the Alps. The Alps and the region is known for its peaceful and serene atmosphere and beautiful scenery. This contributes greatly to the theme of feeling peaceful with those you love, as when you're with the ones you love, you feel at peace with yourself. Thank you for watching Capitan Seote YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe.